let's move on and discuss the performance of the elbow flexion test. To perform this, the patient will be positioned either in seated or standing. I will be demonstrating this in the standing position. The patient will assume the following position with both upper extremities at the same time. So both of the upper arms will be held in anatomical position by the sides, but the elbows will be at maximum volitional flexion. Forearms are both supinated and the wrists are extended. This position will be held by the patient for up to three minutes, and the patient is instructed to give any subjective reports of numbness, tingling, shooting pain, or weakness in either upper extremity. Now, if the cubital tunnel was suspected of being in the right elbow, we would expect these symptoms to occur in that same arm. A positive elbow flexion test is indicated by reports of numbness, paresthesia, or weakness along the ulnar nerve distribution, especially into digits four and five. Remember from earlier, the green color here indicates the sensory distribution of the ulnar nerve in the hand. So this is where the numbness, the tingling, burning, shooting pain would be felt if it was reproduced. Now note that the patient can always report those symptoms prior to the three minute mark. So if they start feeling these after 30 seconds in one of the hands, there is no need to continue the test past that. You can always terminate the test past three minutes. But in order to constitute a negative test, the patient would have to deny any of these symptoms through the duration of the three minutes. Now the sensitivity and specificity have been assessed by multiple studies. In those studies, the sensitivity ranged from 36% to 93%, and the specificity ranged from 40% to 99%. So in both cases, there's a wide range of psychometric values. For the multiple studies that did investigate this test, there were slight differences in the test positions that were used, and there were also slight variations in what constituted a positive test. So for that reason, along with the fact that these ranges are very high, all the way from extremely poor to excellent, we need to interpret the results of the elbow flexion test with caution. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.